going to be looking at a workflow on how to replicate this building here. It is the Sork Institute in California by Louis Kahn Architects. So it's a pretty famous building and for anybody who has studied architecture or admires architecture, that's one of the iconic shots that we always see. So what we're going to do is replicate this inside a Spacemaker. Here we have Spacemaker ready to go. I'm just starting in the country and then project name. I'm just doing my cut and paste here and I'm hitting next. It's going to ask me to search for an area name and it has found it. So pretty powerful tool. Here we have it. Uh, I want to keep this quite tight and I'm going to confirm that map area. And I'm going to just add as much information as possible. You can see a lot of this is open street maps, but we also do have open city model and a USGS bit of information. So I will proceed with that. So here we now have the data pulled down from the cloud and we can see we've got information about topography and buildings and we can see that it has the aerial image internal things like the realistic sky and that will just be processing but we want to get this iconic view with Spacemaker and some of the other tools from Autodesk. So to get started we do have uh, a topo surface which I want to flatten out. I also want to redo these buildings because they're not going to be perfect and you can see they're kind of sitting inside the ground here. So we'll, we'll do this. Um, what's great about this particular design is there's a lot of standardization and repetition so I can erase stuff around the site and I can also mirror the data to get something correct. So here with the site, um, I'm going to first of all do the uh, building pads. So uh, building pads are here, they're activated. And I'm just going to go and hit the create and I want to focus on something that's reasonably square. So I will just grab that from there to there and then that snaps and hit return to close it off and I'll just leave the uh, elevation so the um, FASL so it should be feet above sea level and if you're doing it in different parts of the world it will be M above sea level so I'll just hit that and leave it as is at the moment and uh, you'll just see roughly where it is sitting here on the, the site um, the other thing I want to do with the surrounding buildings, so when I go and select some of these things, they'll start to highlight those the surrounding buildings. These ones I'm going to uh, remove. So I'm just going to select that and remove, and then that one, select it and remove. And just because they're not perfectly symmetrical and I can delineate, delineate over the um, aerial image. So I'm just going to apply that to the current scenario. And we'll see how the site pad has flattened out the site. Okay, so here we have uh, the site pad flat. And now we can look at turning on the satellite image. And we can start to work in the 2D mode to create something which represents the shape of this building. And we can do it in uh, several parts here. So over here in the design tab, it's back in 2D again and back in the aerial image um, and you can hold down shift and shift and right click to pan. Um, so here we can go and start to use uh, a line editor building which can be pretty pretty quick. So we can do this for maybe this this part. 75 feet. So here we have the, the first part and when we look at it in 3D, 
Um, again, I can go back to the reference images of Google Earth, and here we have um, a number of, of floors here. And again, it's uh, different keys to pan around in Google Earth than it is from SpaceMaker, but this gives me an idea of levels. So next thing, back here in 2D, um, we're going to build these wings here. I think these are student residences, So, but I want to convert to a polygon building. Um, I can also say it's commercial. Um, I'll convert it to a polygon building. And now when I select that, now once it's converted, I can go and join as one unit. And this just, just makes it a little bit easier for me to see the information. Um, it's just, just one unit. And then within that one unit, you can still change the height, still change the number of floors, but it just captures things in a different sort of way, it's like kind of a grouping command. Here in 2D, I want to go and create these these pods. So again, these are these units here. So four stories, and they've got windows looking out to the, the beautiful views we have here. So we'll go back to the design, and I'm going to use the polygon building modeling tool. And I will keep this uh, pretty, pretty simple. So I'm going to go out. Um, again, I'm going to try and keep everything at a, at, a, at a certain distance, so 18 feet, and then uh, just roughly look at this, keep it at 10 feet, and then close it up. And you can see when I'm closing it up, it's telling me that it's square, and when I go to my 3D view, I can then snap that, and that's going to give me the corridor or the walkway. Again, when I select that, I'm just going to join as one unit. So it's just the way I like to, to work at the moment in terms of modeling. And again, if I want to specify this, I could say that it's residential. And when we start to look at this with the building colors, it will start to color code the, the functions. And then as we get into other things, we can get into the unit sizes. But we're not getting into that today. We're just wanting to do some modeling and take this a little bit further into Revit and ideally at the end into twin motion. Uh, I'm going to do this in, in a different way. So back here in, in 3D and there's always always different ways to model. So here if I select that and I'm going to go and um, duplicate and move because I want to keep this all reasonably accurate. So I'm just going to do that and now I can hover over that component and grab this and then I can stretch that out. So that's another way to model and keep everything nice and um, parallel and perpendicular. And again, I like to be working with even numbers, even though I work to a metric system, um, I can still you know, roughly work to feet and inches. So here we have um, the first part of the block. And again, I can make that say residential and I can move this particular item along a little bit and I, I can um, move from point A to, to point B. I can type in the exact amount. So if I want to keep that reasonably squared off and um, to a simple number, I can do that. So here I'm going to be looking at the polygon modeling building and I'm going to bring this out nine feet, hit return, click to get that command and I'm going to bring this, you, you can actually do stuff here on an angle, but um, it's looking for a point to, to snap to, and I don't want it to go as far as that. I could just do that for now, um, and just in 3D, you'll see once I complete that command, that's, that's one way to look at doing it. Um, and here, I could bring that back to here. So that, that's one way to do it. Um, another way... To do it just wants to finish that command is to um, model it and we could again bring this out say 10 feet and again hit the return click to complete the command and then um, bring this out uh, again maybe another 10 feet and then click to finish that command and hit return to finish it and then extract that up so a couple, couple of options um, on how to model that bit of geometry. And again, we can double check it in uh, 2D. So if I just get rid of those, for example. And with that, um, what I do want to do, just like I did before, is join as one unit. And then back here in 2D, um, 
move that to that point and that point. So I'll move this one using the move tool and then I can duplicate and move I'm probably snapping at the wrong bit but I can move that again to snap to that face. So here we have the two wings from the model. Again I can go back and see that here in the Google Earth model and use the duplicate and move tool and I'll move that um, along that axis and again I want to be accurate so uh, here what I want to do is try and replicate what's happening on the other side now there is no direct mirror command up here but we could still use some of the tools with the rotation to get get there Now we have 180, okay, so that's worked. And I will move that there to here. Um, there are measurement tools here, so I can go and measure the distance perhaps from here to here. And I better get in a little bit close. So we're looking roughly at, uh, yeah, it's eight, eight foot in. So what I want to do here is grab this component, grab that node, and then take it across. And that now uh, flips that. So again, same here. And you're kind of going to go a little bit slow. And bring that across. And it's sort of trying to find a snap there. I want it 10 feet. And now we have uh, that done. From here, uh, I have my building set up based on some simple building blocks. And what we can do is we can navigate down to that view and you can start to replicate that shot by going here to the camera, save camera position, and I'll just call it main view. And there are some settings here which you can turn on should you want to. So you can either have the satellite image on or off, transparent terrain on or off, and we can start to look at the, the shadows as well. So from here I want to now take this to Revit and then to Twin Motion to replicate the uh, the image we have here which is this uh, sunset sunset view so we'll try and get to that um, but I just wanted to show how you can start a site with some massing information inside of spacemaker